Hello, welcome back. So in this video, I wanted to share the process that I took with one of the drawing challenges in October. I love drawing challenges. It's probably one of my favorite things to do on social media and it really gets you to engage with other illustrators and artists and you get to share each other's work and I love it. I think it's great. Now, October is riddled with challenges and prompts and sometimes it's super hard to figure out what one to do. I personally have been doing Drawtober for the last three years. It's something about Drawtober that I really love. So I wanted to share the process from beginning to end on creating all of the illustrations for this challenge. I choose Drawtober because it is a six prompt challenge through the month of October so you don't have to do one every single day. I quite like to do them before October so I don't even have to worry about doing any of them in October and I can just post them. So there are different themes each year for Drawtober and I personally like to set myself a goal or a challenge throughout the month for myself. Working on something that I'm really excited to try or trying to develop a skill that I need a bit more work on. The first year I did Drawtober, I ended up working on environments. The second year, I believe I worked on lighting. And this year I wanted to try something different again, and I thought it would be really cool to do character development. Now I have had illustrations in Drawtober that have kind of run in a bit of a story, um, but I haven't done it all the way through in every single prompt with the same characters each time. So that is what I wanted to try this time. So let's jump right in and I will see you at the end for the final illustrations. that I pretty much want to paint for this but there's just something that I want to maybe add to it. I don't know whether I want to give myself more work but I feel like this needs it. So we have this idea that it's this moss witch and we are following on her journey through her apprenticeship and I don't know I just feel like jumping in on the day one or week one of Drawtober just being like hey here's the journey, let's go. Maybe I could do some sort of introduction to say, this is the character, meet blah blah blah, whatever her name is. I don't know, I just feel like maybe, am I making more work for myself? I'm gonna try it anyway. I think it might be fun to just introduce this witch to everyone else so that everyone is acquainted with each other. But I think I'm gonna do it. I think it's quite a cool idea. So if it adds one more illustration to this, I would rather do it because I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> So 
So yesterday I did the illustration for the introduction to Meryl the Moss Witch, which I did start filming, but then I used it as a practice test piece for the painting because I wasn't really sure how I wanted to paint all the other ones and I kind of wanted a no pressure zone that I could just figure out how I was going to paint them. So in the end, I didn't like the piece that I did, although it's mostly because the colours came out different to how I thought they were going to, which happens anyway. I do most of my drafting in digital medium, so I normally do it on Procreate. It's just quicker and easier for me to do that, and it gets me a sense of what the colours are going to look like, so I know that they're not going to look the same as when I paint them, but nevertheless, every now and again, I'll paint them, and the feeling that I wanted isn't there, so that's fine. That's what the paint test was for. However, I did edit it afterwards and it was fine because all I had to do was change the colours very, very slightly and then it looked fine. I just, it frustrates me that I can't sometimes get it first when I do the painting, but that can happen and that's fine. So I'm going to keep that in mind and today I'm going to start to paint the rest of the Drawtober illustrations. <laughs>
welcome back. So you have seen all of the draft sketches and the painting of the illustrations. What I did next was put it into Photoshop. All of the illustrations went through a series of editing to make sure they looked firstly like the original paintings, but also so that they were cleaned up because sometimes some dust and marks get on it through scanning and I like to clean up some of the lines, make them a bit crisper and a bit more graphic. I also went in and changed some of the colours a little bit just to make sure that they all were matching. So I thought that we could go through the illustrations about why I chose particular design features and why her story went that way and also tell you the story of Meryl the Boss Witch. So it was really interesting when I was painting these illustrations, I didn't actually know at the time what her name was going to be. You can see in some of the footage earlier that I didn't know her name was Meryl yet, but I knew that I wanted to do a witch that was on her apprenticeship and she was learning the ways of the swamp and learning magic along the way. I also knew that I wanted to challenge myself with different expressions and features in the character, so I thought that maybe her going through some hardships could kind of create this nice character design throughout and watch her go through this journey. So I knew that I wanted to try out some different expressions and I thought that maybe this apprenticeship probably wouldn't go well for Meryl and that would give me the opportunity to create some really interesting facial expressions. So we started off with Garden of Magic. Now this one came to me quite quick. I knew that I wanted her sitting amongst this garden that was abundant with strange plants and I wanted it to be quite tranquil before the chaos happened later on. And this is how I started the story. Meryl the Moss Witch had started her apprenticeship that morning. The old witches of the swamp had taken her in to train her and wasted no time in giving Meryl her first task. In the afternoon, she was to head into the communal garden and pick out the main ingredients for their famous sleeping potion. The only problem was that the garden was filled with thousands of plants and in all shapes and sizes, and Meryl had never made a potion before, let alone find the ingredients for one. As she searched the garden, picking up stems and referencing her books, the light began to fade as the sunset, leaving Meryl feeling pretty hopeless. She trudged back into her quarters near midnight, and with no ingredients found yet, she expected a scolding from the witches next morning. So I wanted a set up that she was hopeful and looking forward to this amazing apprenticeship, but it was starting to show hints that she was gonna find it really difficult. So the next one was Midnight Delivery. This is one of my favorites. I wanted to start introducing additional characters here and there because there was a little thing that I wanted to do at the end and I needed to set it up early on. And one of those things was to introduce these animals that were kind of start appearing in the illustrations. What I thought would be really fun is to do animals that were mostly annoyed especially since Meryl's going through this terrible time with all of these tasks that the witches are setting for her, the animals that are trying to help her are also put through the same grief that she is. This one was called Midnight Delivery. After failing at the communal garden, Meryl was tasked with the night shift. She was to send parcels and letters to the neighboring towns throughout the night until daybreak. At first it was peaceful, soaring through the skies, taking in the scenery, but then a violent gust of wind pushed her broom to the side, sending Meryl tumbling off and hanging on for dear life. Looking below, she saw the rest of the letters flying away in the wind. When the wind subsided, she sighed deeply, with the guardian owls looking less than pleased. So this next one, I know I said that the one before was my favourite, but this one is my absolute favourite. I actually started out the character design of Meryl from this illustration. When I heard that the prompt for this was Spellbook Apprentice, I knew that she was going to be a calamity and it was so easy from there to figure out how she was gonna look and how she was going to act through this story. There's something else that I wanted to try with this challenge and that was to add as much detail in these illustrations as possible with the time that I had. I really wanted to try and add as many items in these illustrations as I could to make it lively and full, almost cluttered in a way. And this was the one that I saw that I knew I wanted to do that. I wanted to see books flying and scrolls falling everywhere. So the story for this one goes, the apprenticeship so far for Meryl had not been going to plan, but today she was determined to get this task done right. 
Heading through the library, all she needed to do was to sort and archive the loose books and scrolls. Rushing between the shelves, she began to make easy work of the organising. She was so confident that Meryl piled her sorting items higher and higher until it became a teetering tower. As she stepped forwards to her next destination, her sandal slipped on the shiny wooden floor, sending her off balance and flinging all her gathered books, pages and potions onto the floor. Was there anything she would get right? Meryl pleaded. The next prompt was fiendish familiar and I wasn't super sure how to tackle this one. Originally, I wanted her trying to ride this giant dog, almost like the witches have told her to take it for a walk, but it's so big and unruly that it ends up dragging her along behind. But the composition didn't really work out quite right. So I thought of maybe this could be a point in the story where it's a bit calmer and it gives our character a bit of respite. I wanted her to feel like she could have a moment to breathe and also the people that were following the story along to have a bit of a breather as well. So I thought, what could she want in a time of chaos? She would probably want a friend. So I created this little frog character for her to find on her walk. Meryl was down on her luck and feeling rather miserable. She headed out on her day off to walk through the town and cool off. Her chores always ended up in a disaster and the stress of it all wasn't helping. On her walk, she found a pond glistening in the sun and on that pond, a single frog on a lily pad. I would love someone to talk to, Meryl whispered. A friend would be great to talk to at a time like this. Suddenly, inspiration struck. She rushed into the neighbouring shops and emerged with a tiny jumper and a small witch's hat. Heading to the pond, she approached the frog and roughly dressed him in the hat and jumper. Now she had a familiar to talk to. The frog croaked, unamused. Number five was the bewitched bog. I also had quite a strong idea of what I wanted this to look like. And as I was saying before, I was starting to set up some additional characters so that I could introduce them again on the last prompt. And in this one, I wanted her to be wading through this swamp and then for her to have this monster kind of appear behind her, but she's so angry that she doesn't even notice. Also, I wanted this to be the most miserable that Meryl has gotten yet and it would be the most she ever will get in this story and i thought this would be a good opportunity to have her have a really angry frustrated look on her face whereas before they've been more surprised and shocked and frightened and sad but not angry this one i wanted her to be angry and annoyed the wishes of the swamp were growing tired of meryl's mishaps never have they found an apprentice that made so many mistakes without intending to Due to their frustration, they offered up a more punishing task, for Meryl to head into the bewitched bog and set up a new research area. Meryl was less than pleased, but eager to prove herself, so she trudged into the bog with determination. Hours and hours passed and her feet kept getting stuck in the icky mud. She shouted and cried, this task was awful. However, all her shouting had gotten the attention of a large bog monster, and unaware to Meryl, loomed behind her as she waded through. So the last prompt was Candlelit Coven and I was so confused and wasn't sure what to do for this prompt. Thankfully, my partner had a fantastic idea of maybe getting her to make her own coven. So I thought it would be a really cool idea to have the last prompt for her to finally find her place, her found family and her friends. And those friends would be made up of all of the additional characters that she's met along the way so that the people who are reading this also get a sense that they have also been through the journey with Meryl as well. And I really enjoyed adding in the different objects that she created to make more people for her coven because she didn't have enough. So at the end of all this, this is how I ended the story. Meryl's apprenticeship was ending shortly and all her memories contain the constant mishaps she encountered. She wasn't pleased with herself, but glad she tried. However, the night of her departure was traditionally set as a night for the elders to congratulate the new apprentices and do a ritual of thanks. Meryl knew they wouldn't show for her. Why would they? That night, she walked to the empty ritual area with her book and waited. She was about to turn and leave until she heard a rustling in the bushes. Out stepped the annoyed owl, the bog monster, and the agitated frog. Meryl was puzzled as to why they would come to her ritual, but as she looked at them, she realised. They had gone through the hard times with her, and despite it all, they had done it together. Meryl sat down thankful. She still needed a few more participants, 
so she made her own out of rocks and pumpkins. Smiling, Meryl closed her eyes, lit the candles and recited the words. She had found her coven. So that was the whole story that I created for Drawtober. Let me know in the comments if any of you participated in Drawtober this year and what you did. And if you didn't do this challenge, let me know if you did any other challenges this year or if you're inspired to enter a challenge. And thank you all for joining me and Meryl on this fun little journey. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.